What's up guys, Eric here, another brew day. Today we're brewing a Kolsch. That's not, it has anything to do with today's video. Today's video we're actually talking about fermenting um, and we're gonna ferment in this old refrigerator, or uh, it's a chest freezer. It's currently broken right now, but I figured out a way that I can ferment this beer out in my garage without having to take it inside and still keep it at within one degree. I'm gonna tell you how I did that. It's cold, my nipples hurt. So I got a couple things. Um, it's called the Fermo Temp. Um, it's about $32 on Amazon. I think you can get it off a of Northern Brewer for like $29 if you wanna wait for shipping, but it took me a day to get each of these. So this is gonna wrap around the fermenter. And then I have an ink bird here um, that's gonna control this. I was able to keep this for three uh, fermenter just with water in it for about three days. I was able to keep it at within one degree. Now the chest freezer is currently broken, so it doesn't turn on. So here in Indiana, it's about 32 degrees right now. Uh, it might be a little bit colder. My thought is, as long as it stays in a you know a cold temperature, about 32, 35 degrees, all I have to worry about is heating my fermenter up. So. My thought is, as long as that temperature stays cool, I can ferment out here, even a lager, um, in this broken freezer. Now, hopefully I can get this freezer up and running in time when the temperature kind of, you know, shoots back up here in a couple months. But I think I have a couple months left of cold weather, so I think this is gonna be perfect. And we'll see how it does, but that's kind of like the setup right now. All right, so we gotta talk about some things. First, I chilled my beer down. It's not to temp yet, but I'm gonna let it get down to temp. Now, the first thing is you saw me put bungee cords around the fermenter. That serves two purposes. One, it keeps the lid of the Big Mouth Bubbler on because the Big Mouth Bubbler is notorious for shooting the lid off. Second, it also keeps the firm temp um, around the fermenter so it doesn't move and it's right up against the fermenter and that helps just keep that heat um, concentrated on that area. So we have an airlock that has a blow-off tube attached to it. I have my temperature probe going to, uh, from my ink bird. Then I have both of the bungee cords going over the fermenter and then I have the thermo temp tucked around the fermenter itself and then both of these will run out of the freezer and that's going to control the temp of the fermenter we're going to let it get down to temp and i'm going to come back out here in probably an hour or so and pitch the yeast so i'm going to have to take most of this stuff off but for right now it's going to monitor what it is it's cooled down to about 55 degrees which is exactly where i want it but one thing I want to point out, the key to this working and the key to me keeping this temperature is whatever you're containing it in has to be around that same temperature. So the heating pad is actually heating the inside of the fridge, which is maintaining that temperature. It's going to cool down because of how cold it is in the garage. It's actually 35 degrees in my garage right now. so. We're gonna get this, uh, we're gonna get my yeast starter going, uh, put it into the fermenter. I'll give you an update maybe later uh, about how this goes. I don't know, we'll see. <sighs> Today is actually day three of fermentation inside the freezer. Um, so far, I've actually been able to keep temp at 55 for this whole time so three days now i'm actually gonna check the tilt real quick all right so we're at 10 26 it says my fermenter's at 56 degrees so that's a little high but that's still fine it's a coal so it's 
Um, it's supposed to ferment at a hotter, you know, at a hotter temperature, but also it's German lager yeast, so it's actually supposed to be fermenting at 55 degrees. So it's just to finish out at 10, uh, 1007. So we got a little ways to go, but it's only day three, so we'll see. All right, what's up guys? Back at two weeks uh, after fermentation has been, is complete, I did a diacetyl rest. I actually raised my temperature up to 60 degrees for um, four days. Uh, I actually finished out pretty early. I let it go a little bit. Um, I gotta check it on the tilt to see what that's reading. Um, but right now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this out of here and we're gonna put it into a keg and I gotta get this fermenter ready because I got a logger that I wanna to try to do. And um, it's supposed to get down to like 30 degrees within this, or this next week. So it's like perfect time. So I can use this setup again. Um, it actually worked really well. I never had a problem with like it getting too cold or it getting too hot. Um, the fridge is insulated enough where it's not going to um, lose any heat and it's not really going to get cold enough where that um, the heater won't keep it to a certain temperature. Okay, so right now my tilt, which our gravity was supposed to be 1009, I think. So we got 1008 and it is currently at 61 degrees. I've already sanitized this keg, it's all ready to go. Like I said, uh, this whole video was just based off of uh, fermenting in a broken freezer, basically in cooler temperatures. Uh, this isn't gonna work in the summertime, so if you're in a cooler climate, uh, this might be an option for you. That's it, guys. So it's a cold or fermenting in a broken freezer. Uh, if you guys have a question, leave a comment below. Make sure to subscribe to our channel, uh, follow us on social media, and I'll see you guys next time. This is Eric, Moskin Homebrew. Cheers, guys.